What's up y'all, Logan Parker, Heirloom Builders. Today we're gonna to be talking about tongue and groove ceiling planks because today we're installing it on the four x 10 rafters in this timber frame wedding barn. It looks super slick, it gives a really nice finish, and it's super durable. So what is tongue and groove and why would you use it? So right here we've got tongue and groove board that fit together like that. The tongue fits right there in that groove. And what that does is allows you uh, a little bit of flexibility as the wood expands and contracts. And another benefit of tongue and groove is that wood has a tendency to move, to twist, to cup. Um, and so you have to really fasten it down well. And if you don't fasten it super well, um, or even if you do fasten it super well, and you have really um, wide spans in between, like we do here, we have four foot of space in between each uh, four by 10 rafter. So if the wood wants to kind of move like this in between each rafter, the tongue holds them together so they can't shift up and down. That keeps our roof surface, our finished metal roofing, super flat and attractive. In this case, is we've got two different sides to this tongue and groove board. The top is square edges, and the bottom has this V groove, so that when you put these two pieces together with a half a V on each side, it ends up creating a full V. And now what that does is it also, again, gives you a little bit of flexibility when wood expands or contracts, you're not gonna be able to see that gap as much if, if it's hidden within a V. Contrast that to a gap on this square side that happens right there. You can really see it, it creates a deep shadow line that wasn't there at all before. Um, so that's probably the two biggest advantages of tongue and groove decking. Uh, and with that V-groove, it just gives you a really sweet, attractive look. It's, it's a bunch of kind of soft lines in the roof of your house, so you can kind of, you can see each individual board. It doesn't look like plywood. Um, if we had glued and screwed them down with all the flat, square edges butt together, um, you wouldn't really be able to tell that, you know, where one board stops and the other board starts, it would all just kind of look like one big continuous piece of wood. And when you're looking from 20 feet down below, it's really nice to see the depth of that board. It's a really sweet look. This material right here costs about $1.60 a square foot, uh, which turns into, you know, it's, it's about $1.10 a board foot. And a board foot is, you know, one inch thick. So this is an inch and a half thick. Um, so anyway, if you're, if you're trying to calculate how much tongue and groove wood you need and you're using an inch and a half thick stuff, this is structural tongue and groove. So we use this on flooring and ceiling planks that are actually structural um, because this inch and a half thick material can span four feet, believe it or not. Um, we've had to glue the boards together with the tongue and groove and screw them down with two lag screws at every rafter to get this to be a structural sheathing, essentially. But this inch and a half thick board can span four feet. You can get up there and walk on it and not even feel the, the floor bending or the roof bending underneath your weight. So it's a really solid surface that serves as our roof decking and our finished ceiling. Since we're in an uninsulated barn, essentially, it's a wedding venue. Um, we're not insulating, it's a three season wedding venue. And so I figured we would stack our functions, double our, our benefit by making this, this roof sheathing into our finished ceiling as well. And it gives us the benefit of being able to look at a super attractive finished ceiling as we're installing it and as we're continuing to work in here, we get to have the benefit of, of kind of working in a finished amazing space. So it's really fun for us as installers to use this product. Um, so anyway, a dollar sixty a square foot is what we pay for this material, the structural material. You can you can probably count on it being about a dollar a square foot for your typical three-quarter inch thick tongue and groove if you're gonna use 
um, just a finished surface sealing that's non-structural. Um, if you want to add, tongue and add a tongue and groove ceiling to your screen porch that already has drywall or plywood or just open rafters, if it's not structural, you can use a three quarter inch board and totally get away with it. Um, they're a lot easier to handle, a lot lighter weight, um, and they're even more cost effective to do that. This is structural, so that's why it's an inch and a half thick. It costs about $2 a square foot to install it. Um, so you're looking at a total of about $3.50 a square foot to install this beautiful finished tongue and groove wood plank ceiling. So, you know, you can install this as your, this is the subfloor, the finished floor, and the finished ceiling all in once. This product, when we put it on the loft floor, is going to be three things at once. Um, and, and only one installation step. So that's why we're using it here because it gives us a super attractive finish for the same cost as what it would be to install just part of a normal finish on a house. So there's quite a few tricks to installing this product. Our objective here when we install this tongue and groove ceiling is to one, create a structural diaphragm so that our roof won't blow down in a hurricane or super heavy wind event. Um, and secondly, to create a, a surface to mount our finished roofing. In this case, we're gonna have a steel metal, painted metal roofing. Um, so we want a super nice, flat, square roof to mount our roof metal on. And we want a really attractive finish. There's a bunch of different techniques to make this happen. The, the first thing that we do is we lay out the very first course that starts on the drip line the bottom of your roof. You want that to be super straight and super flat. And the way that we achieve that is that we, we measure up from corner to corner of the roof the width of this board and then we snap a chalk line and then we run the top edge to that chalk line so that we have a nice straight course. If we follow the fascia and there's a little bit of a bow in it, you know, our boards are going to be like this. We're going to be trying to follow those inconsistencies with these straight boards. So it's really important to start your first course on a straight line and then everything else installs really easily from there. Um, in our case, we had some rafters that, because they're rough sawn, they were bowed pretty significantly. So we had to uh, snap a line from one end of the rafter to the other end of the rafter and cut off that half moon shape where there was so much of a camber that our board, our ceiling boards would have gone up an inch and back down an inch from rafter to rafter. Um, and you'd be able to see that from underneath and that would be uh, not ideal. So, so we went ahead and, and ripped down the couple of rafters that we needed to to get a nice flat roof plane along our rafters. And then we ran our tongue towards the bottom of the fascia and we ran it long, we ran it proud of the fascia. My fingernail is uh, represents the surface, the outside surface of the fascia board, which is the finished end of all your, your roof rafters, so that we could come back. This roofing is gonna be this tongue and groove is gonna be on an angle and our fascia is plumb to that. So we want to basically set this over top of our fascia, overhang it just about a half an inch, the width of this tongue, and then come back and rip that angle off. So we have a nice flush edge right here. So when we put our roof metal and our drip edge flashing on, we're gonna have a lot of adequate nailing, and there's not gonna be a gap where water could eventually drain or blow up underneath and get behind our fascia and cause damage. Um, so we flatten out the tops of our rafters, we make a straight line, and then we overhang and rip the front edge so that we have a nice, clean, straight line. Because when you're, when you're looking from the outside of a building up at the roof, that's the number one thing that you're gonna notice is that drip line. If it's wavy like this, you're gonna see it and it's gonna look like crap. So you really gotta make sure that you flatten that out. Once we screw down the first course of this tongue and groove decking, um, we're pretty much good to go. Uh, but some of these boards along a 12 foot length are gonna be bowed or twisted and we're gonna have to kinda hammer them in. Um, so there's a few techniques that I'm gonna show you right now that allow us to get all of these joints super tight so that when you're looking from the bottom, they look really tight. 
Um, if we don't take any precaution to keep these things tight and we have big gaps that are inconsistent, it's not going to look super sweet. And moreover, if there's any contraction over time, it might fully open that joint. So we want to really hammer these boards tight. And the way that we do that is when we cut our first board, we cut it to be to land on the center of a rafter. And then we butt that next board, the board that we're gonna install, tight to the last adjacent board. And then we put a screw in the bottom corner that's gonna act as a hinge. So that when we, when we pull or hammer that board and get the bow out of it, it doesn't pull or pop out of the groove that we've already gotten snug tight, if you can imagine that. Um, when you're hammering on one side, it's really bowed, it might make the other side pop out. So you've got to screw down the very beginning and then kind of work your way down and fasten it to go. If there's a bow that you can't hammer out or kick out with your boot, what we'll do is take a screwdriver, or I prefer to use a chisel, <clears throat> hammer that right above the leading edge of your tongue and groove ceiling board, your root deck, hammer that chisel in right above, and you can use that chisel as it's dug into the rafter to get some leverage to pull that board in alignment and straight flush with the course below it. Um, so it's really important to get these boards as you go side by side. You want to get those boards well. You don't want them to be staggered like that because when you go with that next course above it, you're going to have a gap. So it's really important that you get all of these boards flush as you go. One of the biggest things that has saved us a major amount of headache and time and especially money when we did this installation. Because this is the majority of the labor on this roof. I mean, it takes five days to install this coming groove, decking on this roof. We want to make sure that that labor is as quick and easy as possible to get a high quality job. So what we do is we lay out all of our rafters so that full length boards can just lay down without even cutting. Um, we know all of our spacing is 48 inch on center. We have 12 foot boards. So we get our first cut, which is 10 feet. We have a two foot overhang, including our fascia. So since we lap our fascia, our overhang needs to be two foot to the outside of the fascia to the center of the first rafter. And then from there, it's every 48 inches on center. So our first cut is two plus four plus four is 10 feet. And the drop from a 12 footer when we cut that 10 footer is the start the two footer for the next course. So every time we cut a board, we have a 10 footer and then 12 feet cuts. Every board down that next course is 12 feet until we get to the end. And then we use the cut, that two foot section to start the next row, then 12 feet, 12 feet, 12 feet, 12 feet. So there's virtually no cutting, there's virtually no measuring. Um, and it just saves an, an insane amount of time. The second trick we do when we're actually laying our boards is we we run all we run all of our boards. So each one of these boards comes as like <clears throat> 12 foot one inch. So we actually do have to cut them to 12 feet to get them to land in the center. And that gives us the capacity to, to choose and you know, cut off a check like that or some kind of other structural issue that might be there. Um, if we left them all full length, 12 foot one, eventually after four boards, we'd be four inches shy. We'd have to add an inch at a time. So, um, but well, we just cut them to exactly 12 feet, and then by the time we get to the end, we run that last board long. And we don't, we don't bring out a tape measure and figure out exactly, it's 12 foot and 1 8, and, and take that measurement and tell our cut guy to cut it 12 foot and 1 8. We just put it up there, screw it down, and then when we get to the end and all of our tongue and groove is installed, we can snap a line from the top to the bottom along our fascia all the boards at one time. That saves us measuring 65 times and it saves 65 cuts and the time in between measuring and cutting. And all we have to do is wait till the end, snap a line, and make one cut. It's as easy as that. So those are the best ways that I know to save yourself a significant amount of time and money to get the best product that you can. So 
Um, we're gonna keep installing this material and hopefully we'll be done by the end of the day. So um, we better get back to it. All right, so from out here, you can really see how close we are to finishing. We only have you know, 30% of this far side to do. This side that has the vapor barrier, the roof underlayment on top is already complete. Uh, and you can see how beautiful it is, even from out here. So once you step inside, it just kind of pops and it really makes you say, wow, this stuff is incredible. Um, so I hope that was helpful. Now that you have a better idea of how we do it, um, hopefully you'll be able to plan for your project to be a success in keeping the costs down, making it as super durable and as super affordable as possible using some of these techniques that we talked about today. So I hope you found it helpful. If so, smash that like button and make sure to subscribe to our channel because we're going to keep following this project all the way to the finish. And we got some real sweet details that we're going to be talking about. So thanks for hanging out. Until the next one, y'all. Peace out.